again. Oh, Greg here once again. And uh, today we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. Um, oftentimes when we get new lenses, sometimes we have a great deal of information about them, and sometimes we have almost no information about them. Um, this lens, for instance, I knew going in that this was a 300 millimeter f3.7. Um, so I knew going in what this would cover. But what happens if you get a lens like this? This is an old Magic Lantern projector lens. And um, I have no idea what the f-stop of this is. I have no idea what it covers. And I have no idea what the focal length is. Um, so today we're going to go through a couple of different things um, that we can try to maybe answer some of these questions. Um, first of all, all of the stuff that I'm doing is uh, estimations. This isn't very scientific. Um, we're just getting estimates and trying to figure out what lenses we can use for what formats. So let's, uh, let's get to the experiment, shall we? Determining the coverage area of your new lens is pretty simple. There are multiple ways to do this. The first and most obvious one, if you have a compatible lens board, is simply to mount it to your camera. If you don't have a compatible lens board, you can try things like this universal iris. If you don't have either of those things, you can do something like this. I've made a coverage chart of the plate sizes I most often shoot, and we're going to test the coverage of several lenses. I'm in a dimly lit room with a large bank of windows. I've placed the chart in landscape orientation so I can use the width of the bank of windows to determine the coverage area of the lens's image circle. As I hold up each lens, we'll see the image come into focus and we can estimate our lens coverage at near infinity. Remember, lens coverage will be slightly larger at portrait distance. Hold up. Before we get into focal length, uh, some of you may be wondering, what is the standard lens for the format that I'm shooting? Well, there's a real simple way to determine that. So let's go to the whiteboard. By measuring the diagonal area of each format, we can estimate the standard focal length. So 10 by 12 is 390 millimeters. 8 by 10 is 325 millimeters. Half plate is 200 millimeters and 4 by 5 is 165 millimeters. So with that out of the way, let's get back to it. We can estimate the focal length of a lens by measuring the distance from the focused image on the wall to the nodal point of the lens. This is the point at which the light converges within the lens. For lenses with waterhouse stops, this would be the nodal point. For lenses with irises, that will be the nodal point. For lenses with neither, I'll estimate somewhere in the middle. Again, none of this is exact. We're just estimating here. We can estimate the f-stop of a lens by dividing the focal length by the aperture, which in this case is the diameter of the front element of the lens. First up is the Scova Morrison Petzval lens, made in 1870. This is quite possibly the favorite lens I have ever used or owned. It's no surprise that the lens covers 8x10. The focal length measures to 300 millimeters at the nodal point. Again, no surprise. The front aperture measures 75 millimeters, making this an f4. Next up is this Leitz lens. This is the first large format lens I ever owned. It covers 8x10 with a pleasing vignette. The lens itself says that it's an 8-inch or 203 millimeter focal length. I'm measuring it at a focal length of 220 millimeters at infinity. The front aperture is 70 millimeters, making this lens an f3.1 by our estimate, although the lens itself says it's an f2.9. I'm not really sure why my measurements and the markings on the lens are different. This is a Petzval lens from a Magic Lantern projector. This little guy covers 8x10 at infinity and probably 10x12 at portrait distance. It measures 310 millimeters focal length at the Waterhouse stop. The front element measures in at 40 millimeters, making this lens an f7.75. This lens will be great for landscape images and outdoor portraits. 
This butcher magic lantern lens came with a working projector. This lens covers half plate, and we're estimating the nodal point of this lens to be a focal length of around 200 to 210 millimeters. The front element is 50 millimeters in diameter, making the estimated stop of the lens around an f4. This lens is the biggest surprise of the bunch. At an f4, this lens is going to be great for portraits in the studio and at events. This Berthoy wide-angle lens is a bit of a quandary. I know that this lens covers 8x10 from experience, but its super wide coverage is difficult to show here. The focal length comes in at 200 millimeters. The front element measures in at 50 millimeters, making this an f4.8. This is a bit of a cheat, though, because this lens really doesn't produce images that are sharp edge to edge until you close down the iris rather significantly. So in reality, I would say this lens is more like an f11. And finally, the Larabor Esecretan lens from our previous video. It solidly covers half plate and would also cover 5x7. I estimate the focal length at around 240 millimeters. The front element measures 50 millimeters, bringing this lens in at around an f4.8. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's about what we've got for this experiment. Uh, really, thank you for joining me for this and uh, suffering through all of this uh, nerdery. It's um, super cool to be doing these experiments and really being able to give you a shorthand to figuring out lenses that you may have sitting around that you aren't using because you don't know different things about them. But I definitely encourage you, even if you don't have a lens board to put the lens on, just put it up against a wall, let's see what it covers, and take some measurements and do some estimations. And maybe you might be surprised that you might find a lens that you really love to use and that can really do some uh, amazing things. So thank you for joining me for this. Um, my patrons, always, thank you so much, and uh, thank you for sticking with me, even though I'm not the best at keeping to a schedule. Um, I've got a bunch of different things going on right now, and I'm really trying to get content out there for you guys and for me, because this does just as much for me as it does for you. Thank you once again, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Mm -hmm.